Hi, boys and girls. It's time to talk some more about spiders. And that's the fun thing. We're talking about spiders for two weeks. So we talked about them last week and we're talking about them this week. So we can talk about all kinds of things when we talk about spiders. First of all, I just wanted to remind you, you probably already know this, but spiders belong to a group of animals called arachnids. Can you say arachnids? That's kind of a fun word, isn't it? And that just means that they are creatures that have two body parts. They have eight legs, they don't have any antenna, they don't have any wings, and they can't chew. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. And then we have never talked about where spiders like to live. And you know what? They like to live just about anywhere except places that are really, really, really cold. So they don't like the Arctic, that's like the North Pole, and they don't like Antarctica, which is the South Pole. But otherwise, they like to live in all kinds of places. They live in forests and deserts and in grass, in caves, on mountains. And there are even some spiders that can live underwater. And you know what? They like to live in houses too. Now, we may not like it that they like to live in houses, but some spiders do live in houses. All right, today we're going to look at the spider web really, really closely and talk about a lot of things uh, with the spider web. But the first thing I want you to know is that scientists that study spiders and spider webs think the webs are amazing. And they think that spiders actually have a design in mind when they uh, weave their webs. It's not just something they just do and it happens whatever way they create it. They actually think of their webs as a work of art. And then we might think that spiders don't want the insects they're trying to catch to see the webs, but that's not true. The webs are designed so that the insects will see them and walk onto the webs. <laughs> and some of the webs are shiny for exactly that same reason, to make sure the insects see the web. Um, also, spiders like to make large webs because the larger the web, the more things they will catch. Now, on the average, it takes a spider about an hour to make a web. And on a day's time or in a day's time, a spider might catch one or two insects, but you know what, that's not enough for a spider. Spiders want to get more. So the bigger the webs, the more they catch and maybe some bigger creatures will get caught in the web too that the spider can eat. All right, and you know what, spiders can be kind of sneaky. When they put their webs out, they want insects to see them, but you know what? There are creatures out there that like to eat spiders and those creatures can see the spider web and think, ah, oh, there will be a spider there that I can eat. But spiders leave old exoskeletons behind or old uh, egg sacs behind and make it look like nobody lives there when they're still living there. Those sneaky spiders, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And I'm trying to see if I forgot anything. Oh, we said it takes about 60 minutes to make a web. And then spiders, many of them, like to do a new spider or web every day. So they do a new web every day. And do you know what they do with the old web? They eat it. Yuck. I don't think I'd like to eat an old spider web, would you? No. So those are just some things that scientists have found out about spider webs. And they think the spider webs, as I said before, are amazing. And I think they are too. Now, let's use the PowerPoint to go through some different kinds of spider webs, okay? All right, and you always know it takes Mrs. Becker a little time to get this ready to go. All right, so I put this picture of the spider on just to remind us that the part of the spider's body that helps with the web is in the abdomen. This is the abdomen, and the part that helps with the web is called the spinnerets. Can you say spinnerets? That's kind of a fun word too. And that's where the silk comes from, which is what the spiders use to make their webs. So remember, that's at this part of the body. And then we haven't talked about the fangs before, but there are fangs that a spider has. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. All right, do you know what this is? This is a wheel. It happens to be a bicycle wheel. And what shape is it? You're right, it's a circle. And then do you see all these spokes here? Well, that kind of reminds me of a kind of spider web called an orb web. 
And here's an example of an orb web. You can't see the whole web here, but you can see the circles in the middle. And you can see all the circles that go around. And let's see, this is a great example of an orb web. Look at all those circles. And I do think that is amazing that a spider can make that web. And here's another orb web. And do you see that spider right in the middle? You might be wondering, hmm, why doesn't a spider get stuck on its own web? Well, God made it so that spiders have a special oil on their body that makes it so they don't get stuck to the web. Isn't that amazing? All right, what shape is this? That's right, this is a triangle. That's another kind of spider web. A triangle web, do you see one side here, side number two here, and side number three here? And let's look at another triangle web. Side number one, side number two, and side number three. Wow. Do you guys know what this is? This is called a funnel. Maybe you've used one before, but you can see it's big at the top and what shape is at the top. That's right, it's a circle. And then when you go down into the hole, it gets more narrow and narrower, doesn't it? All right, well, spiders can make funnel webs too. You can see this spider has made a huge opening here and then it's been hiding down here at the bottom and it's coming out to check. And I think it got a couple of insects there, didn't it? Maybe there's another one here even. That's a good day for the spider. And here's another, or excuse me, funnel web. And you can see the hole here and the spider's coming out again, probably to check to see if it got any insects. All right, this is a kind of web just called a cobweb. By the way, oh, there's a black widow spider in there. But a cobweb is just a web that's made in any which way, okay? And house spiders usually um, weave these kinds of webs. And here's another cobweb. Oh my goodness. I don't know, but sometimes Mrs. Becker encounters or finds these webs. And, and you know how I find it? Because I walk right through it and then I have to kind of look, get the web out of my hair. But anyway, all right, this is a mesh. And this is a mesh spider web. And I have another picture. Can you see the mesh in this? And look at that's pretty shiny too. And then do you know what these ladies have in their hands? That's right, that's a bed sheet. Think of your bed sheets. And think of what it would be like if they just laid the bed sheet on the ground. Well, then you'd have something like this. This is a sheet web. Doesn't it look like a sheet? It's laying on the ground, on the grass in this case. And another one, another good example of a sheet web. Huh, who knew that spiders made that many different webs? And you know what? They use their webs for many different things. Um, some spiders use the webs, obviously, to catch insects. Some use them um, just to make walls. Some use them to wrap around the insects that they catch. Some use them for their um, egg sacs. All right, so they have different uses for these webs that they make. And all spiders can make silk, but not all spiders spin webs. And that's another thing to kind of remember too. Now, have you wondered how spiders make a spider web? I have a little video. It's a very short video that can show you how this happens. So let me find that next. All right, I just have to do a few things here. All right, it's very short and there's kind of a silly guy that talks about how to make spider webs. How does a spider make its web? <laughs> no, on its underside, a spider has organs called spinnerets that spin silk threads. First, it connects two endpoints, like two branches with silk threads forming a bridge. It then releases a loose thread. From its center, it adds a new thread, pulling it to form a Y shape. It joins the three points to form a frame, then lays radial threads till the web becomes strong enough. Finally, from the center, it spins spirally, completing the web. Oh, see, I told you it was short. And remember, how long does it take a spider usually to make a web? about an hour. That's right. That's right. Now, that takes a lot of energy. That's why the spider needs lots of food too, to do that. All right, now let's talk about what happens if a spider uses a spider web 
to get its food. All right, so an insect will come along and start walking on the spider's web and get stuck. And then the spider will dart across the web and take some more web and wrap the insect in that web. And then we said earlier that spiders can't chew. So if spiders can't chew, how do they eat their food? Well, that's where those fangs come in. The fangs have some poison in them and the spider will take the fang and poke it into the insect that's in the web and that will turn everything inside the insect into liquid, I mean, kind of like water. And then instead of chewing, the spider sucks the inside out of the insect. I know that's yucky too, but that's the way it works. So that's how spiders eat, okay? All right, boys and girls, I hope you've had fun learning more about spiders today, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.